So far then, I have a program which sets up an array variable and populates it with a selection of animals. My program then selects one of those animals at random and tells the user how many letters there are in that word. The message is displayed in a message box, but it's also used as the caption of a label on the form. So the user's ready to start guessing. Before we begin, I just want to point out something that I've done. All of the words in my array contain unique letters. For example, I haven't used the word wolf because that's got two O's in it. I've also avoided words like elephant because that's got two E's. I've done this quite deliberately because I want to keep the program which checks the user's guesses as simple as possible. So quickly check through the words you've used to make sure there aren't any that have two or more of the same letter. OK, to start guessing, the user is going to click on the Go button. What the Go button will do is check to see what the user has input into this text box. To write the code for the Go button, I just need to double click it. And you can see here, I've got a new procedure stub. I can write my code in here. The first thing I need to do is to pick up whatever the user has typed into that text box. So I'm going to declare a string variable to hold it. And to populate that string variable, I'm going to say stguess equals me. Remember, me is our way of referring to the form. Me dot. And if I type txt now, I can see all of the controls on the form whose names start with txt. That's why I called it txt guess in the first place. Select that with the tab key, dot text. So what I'm saying is take the text that's in this text box, which is on the form, and load it into this variable. Now let's just make sure I can output that. A simple message box. Let's run that and see what we get. Type a letter. And there it is. That's working rather well. Now, there is actually a little issue that I need to get rid of here. The user can actually type as much as they like in here, and I want to limit that to just one letter. That's actually an easy fix. I'm going back to the form, and there's a property of this text box which I can change. It's called the max length property. It's currently set to zero, which means they can type as much as they like. If I type a one here, the user can only put one letter in that text box. Let's just quickly test that. Now, the main thing that the program for the Go button needs to be able to do is to check to see if the user's guess is actually inside the word. So it needs to be able to get a hold of the word as well. It won't be able to do that because this variable has been declared inside the new game procedure. I'm going to move it just by dragging to the top of the module. So that declaration is now up here. What that means is that any programs inside this module can work with this variable. So let's make sure we can do that as well. I'm just going to output it. So I select new game. It's got three letters. I'll type a letter in here, I'm outputting it, and I'm also outputting the word. Looks like it's a yak. Now comes the interesting bit. I need to be able to look at each letter in that word separately in order to check to see if it's the one that the user has typed in. I'm going to show you a function called the mid function. Let me declare a variable called, I don't know, stTest. And I'm going to load it up with one letter from the word. So I'm going to say stTest equals, and this is the mid function. The mid function wants to know which string of characters it's checking. Well, that's st word. It wants to know a starting place in that word. So let's go for character number two, and it wants a length. Well, I only want to look at one character, so I'm going to go for a length of one. Let's just see what this does. I'll output stTest. Hmm. 
run the code, choose a word, it's got six letters, I'll type a letter in here, T. OK, that's coming out now. It's a donkey. And there's an O at position 2. Let's check that again. Let's change the 2 to a 3 and see what we get. New game, six letters. I'll type a letter. I'm getting the letter back. Oh, it's a donkey again. And there's an N at position 3. What I've shown you here is a way to get a hold of an individual letter within a string of text. When I've selected that letter, I can pop it into this variable. In fact, I don't really need this variable. I can just output that letter directly. Let's get rid of that dim statement and that message box. OK, it's going to do exactly the same thing. This is going to select the third letter inside this string. Now, what I really want to do is visit every letter inside that string. So I'm going to use a loop now. This is something called a for loop. I need an integer variable, which is going to be my loop counter. And I'll say for i letter equals 1 to 3. And instead of putting the number 3 here, I'm going to put i letter. And I close my loop with a next statement. Now the way to think of this is, the first time through the loop, i letter is a 1. So this is going to output the first letter of the word. Then we go back to the top of the loop and I letter is now two. And this will output the second letter of the word. And then we go back to the top of the loop again and I letter is three. So this will output the third letter of the word. Let's just see what happens. In fact, I can get rid of these as well now. I don't need these coming out. New game five letters, I click on go, H, O, R, you can see I'm scanning along the first three letters of that word. I can tell it's a horse. But what I really want to do is scan all of the letters in that word. But of course I don't know which word it is. I can however do this. You may remember, len, st word, gives me the length of the word. So now I'm going to scan from 1 to the length of the word. Let's see what we get. Now, I have to select new game first. G-O-A-T. Let's try that again. Select a different word. Y-A-K. OK, so I know how to visit each letter in the word. What I really want to do now then is, as I visit each letter, check to see if it's the one the user has typed in. So inside this for loop, I'm going to put an if block. I'm going to say if this letter is equal to whatever the user guessed, then I'll display a message. So what I've done here is I've nested an if statement inside a for loop. Let's run it. Select a word, it's got three letters. I'll type uh, a K. Nothing's happening. Let's try an O. No, a C. Found it, looks like it's a cat. So we now have a way of checking to see if the user's guess is actually in that word. 